right, looking at 5.1, modeling periodic functions, a behavior. So, we're going to look at some definitions, such as a cycle. A cycle is one complete repetition of a pattern. A period is the horizontal length of one cycle on a graph. So the first thing we do is we trace one cycle and once we trace it we can measure how long that cycle lasts and that is the period. Now a couple of other important things is that a periodic function is a function that has a pattern that repeats itself and this pattern is a, y, a pattern of y values that repeats at regular intervals. Okay, so very important that the y values repeat themselves. And we're going to see some examples of peri fu periodic functions in the next slides. Now, amplitude is the measure of half the distance between the maximum and minimum. So, values of the periodic function. And how you calculate a amplitude is literally by taking the max, so let's rewrite this, amplitude is equal to the max minus the min divided by 2. So this is the formula you would use to calculate amplitude. The next part, sinusoidal function. A sinusoidal function is having the curve form of a sine wave now that curve form of the sine wave you're going to look at in this unit. In this unit we're going to talk a lot about sinusoidal functions. And again, sinusoidals are always periodic, so that's going to be important. And finally, the last one, equation of axis. The equation of an axis is the sum of the maximum and minimum divided by 2. So let me just show you what the equation of the axis will be. So if we're looking at an equation for the equation of the axis, the equation of the axis is equal to the max plus the min divided by 2, all divided by 2. So it's the max plus the min divided by 2, and that's the equation of the axis. All right, moving forwards. Here are some examples here. And we're going to examine each graph and determine whether the uh, function is periodic and if it is, determine the period. So, does this particular graph have a pattern that repeats itself? The answer is yes. So the first thing you want to do is trace one cycle. So we're going to trace a cycle. Here it is. This is one cycle that we traced. Okay? And I'm just going to just go back a second here we go so we started here and we moved up down around over until we reached the end of the cycle and then it will begin to repeat again so we move from this point to this point and from there to there the length of that is known as the period so what we first traced was a cycle now we need to know the period of this function. The period of this function, how long is it? Well, the period of that function is 6. Now I could have traced it anywhere. So here's another example of another trace that I could have traced. Here's one here. I could have started over here and traced it over here. So your trace, based on what you trace, will be what is marked. So very important that you uh, determine if the function is periodic and if it is determine the period so in this case the period is six units long the second one is this a periodic function and even though these ones repeat themselves you'll notice that these ones do not repeat the same y values therefore this is not a periodic function the next part examine the graph Determine whether the function is periodic, and if it is, determine the amplitude. So, trace one cycle. So there's the length of 6. Trace one cycle for this. Here we go. Determine the period. But well, we don't want the period in this case. We want the amplitude. The amplitude is the highest minus the lowest divided by 2. So, the amplitude is going to be highest minus the lowest divided by 2. 
Highest is 3, lowest is negative 1, divided by 2 gives you 2. Now folks, very important, you trace a cycle, whether you trace the red cycle or the blue one that you will see faintly here, the idea is that you trace one cycle to indicate what the cycle is and that will allow you to determine the period, the amplitude, and all the other parts that you may need in a periodic function. All right, next example. So, given the following, it says predicting with periodic functions. Consider the periodic function shown. What is the period of the function? So here's our periodic function. What is the period? So trace one cycle, very important. Trace one cycle, there we go. And determine the length of that. So it goes from negative five to one, which means it's six units long. Now, it says determine f at 2 and f at 5. f at 2, the y value is 1. f at 5 means x. when the x is 5, what's the y value? The y value is 0. So f at 2 is equal to 1. f at 5 is equal to 0. Now, it asks you to determine f at 8. Well, you can't see it here, but we know that this function repeats every 6 units. So... 2, it starts, the different, 8 and the 2. If you look at the x values and find the difference between the x values, if the difference is a multiple of the period, then that value has the same y value. That means that their y values repeat. So, 8 minus 2 is 6, and 6 is the period. Remember it has to be a multiple of 6. 8 minus 2 is 6. That means that it has the same y value. That means that f at 8 is equal to 1. Okay, now f at negative 10. Well, if I take negative 10 and I subtract 2, I get negative 12. So I find the difference between the x values if that number is a multiple of 6, that means that they share the same y value. So f at negative 10 also equals 1. f at 2, which equals 1. And then finally, f at 14. Well, if we take 14, take away 5, the answer to that is 9. 9 is not a multiple of 6. 14 minus 2, though, is 12. That is a multiple of 6, therefore even f at 14 also equals 1. <coughs> Sorry. Let's try one more. f at 15. How, what will the value at f at 15 be? Well, 15 take away 5 is 6. f at 15 take away 2 is 13, which, so that's not going to work. f at 15 take away 5 is 10, that is not a multiple of 6. 15 take away 2 is 13, that is not a multiple of 6. So what other possible values? Well, let's look at the graph. Let's use the graph to help us. 15 take away 6 is 9. Do we have 9 on our graph? We don't. Take away 6 again, so 15 take away 12 is f at 3. Can we find the value at f at 3? f at 3 is negative 1. So 15 will, f at 15 will equal the same as f at 3, which will equal negative 1. So the idea here, folks, is that we should be able to, to subtract the x values to find the matching one that shares the same y values. As long as when we subtract the x values, the, uh, the x value, that number is a multiple of 6. Next. What is the amplitude of the function? Well, it's going to be the max minus the min divided by 2. Max minus the min divided by 2 is going to give you 2.5. Last one, determine the four x values such that f at x is equal to 2. So when that means that we have to find out where the graph hits 2 at a nice point. So here are our three values, negative 6, 0, so f at x equals 2 when x equals negative 6, x equals 0, x equals 6, and x equals 12. Why 12? Well, folks, remember that it repeats every 6 units, so what we would do is just add 6 to the next value to find out when that matching value is. 
So one more time. Periodic functions repeat in the same interval the same y values. So we're able to find multiple values that will repeat themselves through a specific period. All right, last one. This one says classify each graph as periodic or not periodic. So we're just going to look at the one graph here. Is this graph periodic? And if it is, tr you should always trace a cycle to show what repeats itself. So when you draw this, we trace a cycle over here, folks. We could trace a cycle over here, going like this. The idea is you trace one cycle, and once you trace one cycle, you indicate that it repeats itself. What is the period of this function? Well, that's 5. What's the amplitude? Let's say you had to find that. You take the highest 2 minus negative 1 divided by 2, which is 1.5. Folks, it's very easy to find the period and the amplitude. You just have to remember how to look for it. All right, well, that's the end of the video. Have a, gr have a numerical day. Take care.